And why do we do this? The words of Nobel Prize winning Chilean poet Gabriela Mistral wrote, we are guilty of many errors and faults, but our worst crime is abandoning children, neglecting the fountain of life. Many things we need can wait. The child cannot. To the child we cannot answer tomorrow. The child's name is today. Pat and Ruth Williams have answered Gabriella Mistral's call. They said today. They opened their hearts, their home, to children in need. Most of their children are grown, but Pat, with the help of some of your friends at the Orlando Magic, we uh, dug up uh, some footage of you a few years ago when the hurricane was at its strongest, when that Category 19 found 16 teenagers in your home all at one time. So let's take a look at the Williams family in action dealing with a hurricane. The president of the Magic is Pat Williams, a man who definitely has his hands full. When he's not running the team, he's busy with a family that at last count came to 18 children, 14 of whom are adopted. Things can get pretty crazy around the Williams house, and we dropped in on a typical day. The Orlando Magic are always under the watchful eye of president and general manager Pat Williams. With the help of two first-round lottery picks, he's built a strong team, and he loves running an NBA franchise. But after a long day at the office, there's nothing he enjoys more than coming home to his family. Friday is finally here, and Pat's looking forward to a nice, long, relaxing weekend. Ah, uh, it's time to relax. Lean back and just enjoy the melodies. Saturday starts with an early wake-up call, but before the kids can get out and have fun, there are chores to do. From the time we get up in the morning to rolling out three boxes of cereal, making 17, 18 sandwiches for lunch, 18 children is not for every family, believe me. But in our case, we've got the room, we've got the capability of doing it, and now we're trying to make the whole thing work. Pat, the Congressional Coalition on Adoption is very pleased, very honored, and all of us, my colleagues, are thrilled to present to you our first National Angel in Adoption Award to Pat and Ruth Williams for your inspiring personal experience with adoption. Thank you so much. In the book of Psalms in the Bible, verse 127.3, the psalmist says, Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord. To Pat and I, that means that children are gifts from God. And we truly believe that, even when the school calls three times in a month to say, we need another conference. Our, first, our former First Lady and now our First Mother, Barbara Bush, said, whatever the era, whatever the times, one thing will never change. Children must come first. You must read to your children, and you must hug your children, and you must love your children. Your success as a family, our success as a society, depends not on what happens in the White House but what happens in your house. Magic Johnson, a former NBA star, said, all kids need is a little help, a little hope, 
and somebody who loves them. This has been our goal for our children, all of our children, whether they're birth children or adopted children. We have simply tried to make our house a haven, a place where children can experience love and acceptance and become the very best that they can be. For Pat and I, children truly are a gift. And I thank you for simply honoring that this evening. Well, thank you very, very much. First of all, for this plaque. It's nice to get a plaque that my dentist finally will approve of. And I want to thank all of you for this marvelous, marvelous honor. We are humbled by it. I also want to thank you for your patience tonight. It has been a long evening, uh, but you've been wonderful. My suit has gone in and out of style three times, but you're hanging in there nicely, so thank you very, very much for that. I want to say just a word tonight to the dads. I've just finished writing a book called Coaching Your Kids to Be Leaders. The book will be out in early January. I did about 800 interviews with leaders across our nation at the highest level of government, military, sports, down to those leading in little league areas and inner city works. And one of the questions I asked, who was the most influential person in you becoming a leader. I can't tell you the number, folks. Not all of them, but a huge percentage who said it was my dad who made the greatest difference. So I want to challenge you tonight, fathers, and this is certainly no knock on mothers, because we know how good they are. But dads, your kids need you. And the investment you're making in their lives, you cannot put a price tag on it. My friend Bill Glass, the longtime NFL football player who now runs a prison ministry out of Dallas, has gone in and done crusades in more prisons than anybody in history, well over a thousand. I talked to Bill Glass not long ago. I said, Bill, is there a common thread that you see with these prisoners that you're dealing with? And he said, yes, there is. He said, they all have a father problem. Either they were neglected, abandoned, abused, taken advantage of, they all have a father problem. And then Bill said, let me take it one step further. They all hate their fathers, said Bill Glass to me. And then he pointed out, how many pro football players on Sunday look in the camera and say, hi, Dad? He told me that on Mother's Day, Hallmark gives cards to all the prisoners. They're all gone on Mother's Day. They're not touched on Father's Day. So dads, your position is vital and I want to encourage you that what you're doing now in the area of fathering will pay tremendous dividends down the road. We are asked frequently, in fact, Senator Landro tonight asked us, how do you do it? Why did you do it? Why all these children from four nations? Why did you go through that year when you had 16 teenagers at one time? The year, by the way, I realized why some animals eat their young. <laughs> well, the answer is very simple. For many years in our home, we had needlepoint that hung on one of the walls, and I think it explains why we did what we did and probably explains why all the adoptive families here have done what they did. The needlepoint says some would gather money along the path of life. Some would gather roses and rest from worldly strife. But we would gather children from among the thorns of sin. We would seek dark almond eyes and a carefree, toothless grin. For money cannot enter in the land of endless day, and the roses that are gathered soon will wilt and fade away. But oh, the laughing children, as we cross the sunset sea and the gates swing wide to heaven, we can take them in, you see. <laughs>